Good morning, everybody. You ready for this? We're going to install a wireless security system on Miranda today. Ready? We're going to try something a little different this time with Miranda, though. A uh, different brand and a different type of system. And it's an NVR kit. It comes with a three terabyte hard drive. It is network ready, just like the other ones. And you can watch on your computer, your phone remotely, but you'll see these cameras are a little different than things I've used in the past. And I know what you're thinking, Eric, that's a lot of wires for a wireless system here. Well, let me explain. The cameras themselves are wirelessly transmitted to the NVR hard drive. They still need power, however. So how does that help? It actually helps in a big way because, for instance, I will have two of these in the top right corner of my RV, outside the RV out there. They're going to come in here. I will have a power source to plug all these cameras in. But not having to run the BNC cable everywhere, that has been the nightmare with previous RVs, is routing the wires up through the walls or underneath the chassis and having a mess of thousands, literally thousands of feet of wire running to all of these cameras. So, in my own research of these, and again, this is an 8-channel, it comes with 8 of these wireless cameras. In my own research, a lot of people have given bad reviews to any kind of a wireless security system. Have you ever actually read through the reviews? The reason why they only get 2 or 3 out of 5 stars on Amazon? All of the negative reviews are the same complaining about, I'm in a, a warehouse and I'm trying to get 400, 500 feet away and it doesn't work. Well, yeah. Or, I'm in a three-story mansion and I can't get my cameras on the third floor to work down in the basement. <laughs> it says right on the box that it has a 150-foot range to keep these going all the time. Uh, so <laughs> like, I'm baffled that people are still giving bad reviews because of that. You're asking too much out of the system. It, it prom This one particularly promises a 150-foot range. I'm in a 32-foot RV. That means it's impossible for any of these to ever be more than 32 feet away from the NVR recorder, right? So I can weed out some of those negative reviews and say, this might work for me. I'm not endorsing this product. I don't know. It might not work. But let's get it all set up here on the table and make sure the system physically works because these are supposed to come linked to the NVR from the factory. All right. So forgive me for the power wiring mess here. Luckily, I guess a good thing is the power cords, all eight of them, they give you 10 feet of cord for those. So you're going to be able to hit the camera wherever it's going to be at. But right now, yeah, it, it looks disastrous. But I want to test this system out before I install it. Wouldn't that be a good idea? So I got the DVR plugged in. I have wired up all eight cameras to power. They also have, I don't know what, it looks like an Ethernet thing. So maybe you could run it power and everything over over ethernet cords as well so we're just not using that cord and um i want to turn this on i got it hooked up to my tv here and i want to see if it really does just sync like they say it does so come over here hit power and power and i'm hearing noise that's a good thing there we go digital recording system So it's supposed to be synced from the factory and I'm just, oh, look at that. All eight cameras are on. System initializing, please wait. Well, that is promising that all cameras work at least. Network cable disconnected. Yeah, I know, we're not quite to that step yet, guys. Can we just skip that? So it wants you to set up a username and password, make this unique. Oh, I forgot to say, the system does come with a mouse plugged in so you can navigate. Again, uh, wait till the end of the video, guys. I do want to show how to set this up. It has a setup wizard for Android, iOS, or cloud, or a combination of, of everything. And I'm going to show this at the end, but we're not quite connected to the network yet. Because that's a little tricky in an RV, most of us are not going to have a dedicated Ethernet network internet, right? Stick around till the end of the video. I'll show you an awesome, easy hack for getting around that. And we will have Ethernet connected to this. So for right now, that's all I needed to see was that all of these cameras work. I also forgot to mention that these are now 1080p cameras. So I have switched to digital. All of my previous Night Owl versions of these have all been analog and they've been measured in TVL. 
So I had a 600 TVL system, and then I had a 900 TVL system. At the time, I was always thinking I wanted to upgrade to the 1200 TVL system. Well, there's something even better than 1200 TVL, and that's 720p digital cameras, or in this case, 1080p digital camera system. So should be a much clearer, crisper image. And yes, these all have night vision up to 100 feet. So, well, let's just grab one and make sure it works here. Okay, so that's that bottom screen. And there we are. Awesome. So let me shut this down and we'll go outside. First of all, I have been thinking about this for several weeks now because there are a couple complications with this RV. The first one is the slides. Not only do I not want to mount cameras to any slide because of the wiring that it would have to give and play in that, this, I'll show you. If I do it over here on the driver's side where I normally do it and aim that way, all you're going to see is the side of the slide right there. So, <laughs> and that'll work for driving. In fact, that is a very important camera, driver's side shooting this way uh that way when people get to you know if somebody ever side swipes me or hits me or something i'll be able to show clearly that i am in between my lane and you came over into me right that is a very important camera so it's still going to get mounted there in the corner it's just when the slides out that'll be an obstructed view right there hence in the back here there will be a redundancy there will be another camera in this corner covering this angle that will be blocked uh, when the slide is out. So, and also I want to keep three cameras here in the corner where they're easy to plug into power right there. I know it's not going to look as good as putting one in the middle where my backup camera is, but I just don't, I want to keep drilling the holes to a minimum inside for, for power right now, right? It's bad enough that I have to drill a half inch hole for the wires and the cameras. It's not that bad. Like it has to get done. It's, it's very important. So and then on this back corner here, on the passenger side, there doesn't need to be any cameras. I'm not gonna have any blank spots because I'm gonna have one up at that corner shooting this way and the back going this way. Therefore, they're gonna intersect and I don't need to drill holes into this corner right here, which I'm really happy about. So I'm gonna get out my telescoping ladder, climb up here, and I'm gonna install the first of two cameras here on the corner and I'll get back to you. All right, I got my first two holes drilled. I know it's a little cringeworthy, uh, even if it's yours, it still just makes you go, are you sure, are you sure, no, I'm sure. This, these are not pointless holes. This is for a very good thing that, in my opinion, just has to happen so that in case there's ever an accident or something, I can always just give an SD card or hard drive to somebody and say, look what happened. And that's what I wanna do. I may have forgot to mention these are fully articulating. There's little Allen wrenches at all three spots. So that'll sit on there like that. So, yeah. I'm gonna clean this area up and I'm gonna install the first two cameras. We're getting rain showers for like 15 minutes and the sun comes out and back and forth and... I'm not a professional installer by any means, so this is gonna take me all day to make this work. Let me show you one other thing. I got the first two cameras installed here. You do not actually seal silicone around this base. Even though there's a hole drilled into it, just like the light fixtures, there's a hole at the bottom of these right there. Just in case moisture ever does get in there, it has a way to escape and not go into the RV. It just escapes down the side of the RV. So that's why you don't silicone those up. Also, I want to talk about the pivot points. So once you get these set, the Allen wrench, I definitely trust that those are going to be locked in. But because this is not, I guess, meant for the road, it's meant for the house under the garage or something like that, the antenna ports, and the part that goes in here, I'm gonna use a little bit of Loctite on the threads. It's not gonna super glue the connection. It'll still be removable, but it will keep it so that when I go off-road or over bumps or bounces, it will keep those threads from jarring loose a little bit, just like you might do on your lug nuts for your tires a little bit, just to keep them secure. A little bit of Loctite is not gonna hurt, and it's gonna make sure that the antennas and everything stays secure all the time. I like the way that looks. You might say the antennas are an eyesore, I think it's I think it's well worth running all that extra BNC wire all throughout the RV though. So yeah, got these two installed. Gonna move on to the other side now. All right, got the driver's side done now. I do need to clean up a little bit of the foam that's come down. And obviously, again, this camera won't work when the slide's out. Won't be much of a view, but it'll work while I'm driving and I will have that angle covered, but 
I, I kind of like this, how this installation's going so far. Next, we'll work on the back corner, and then we just gotta worry about uh, running the wires inside for power. Alrighty, so all the cameras are done. The last three on the back side here are done, and this one that will aim towards the back, uh, all hooked up, all tightened, good to go on the outside. Let's go inside. Believe it or not, that was actually the easy part of this entire installation, because I want to do this the right way, the first way. So now what we got going on is cords sticking out of random places. I have taken the TV down. I've got cords over there, and then I've got three more cords in the back bedroom corner that all need power. So, and as I said, the outlet that is behind this TV is disabled when the engine is running. So, that means power needs to be brought over from my solar system this way to power the DVR and and I'm going to put a power strip up there for the five cameras. I don't know if I showed you this one. I also put the last eighth one inside to kind of show the RV. But I want this TV to have, well, two jobs right now. One is going to be for the uh, over-the-air free channels. And the second one is going to be HDMI hooked into this from the DVR so that I can watch TV and still have access to this. Sometimes if I'm in a shady area and it's dark, and I got all the, the curtains closed, I'll just flip this on so that I can see what's going on, make sure nobody's messing with anything outside the RV, right? This is gonna take a little bit of time. I will show you what I come up with once I get the front part done, and then we'll power up the rear cameras. First of all, the, the cleanup and make this look good part of it, that is gonna take an extra day. Just setting up the cameras and making this work is one day alone by me, but I don't mind at all. I'm actually having a lot of fun with this. So I have all of the cameras powered. Be mindful, I am not happy with how it looks, okay? So this stained wood, this color, I guess you'd call this cherry, I'm going to get some from the RV salvage place that runs a strip down here to hide those holes and the wires, as well as the ones over here and everywhere else. All the So ignore all of my wiring exposed right now because that doesn't matter. It's working. So what we're seeing on my screen right here, and there I am right there in the bottom right, Hi everybody! <laughs> Little bit of a delay, less than a second. Less than a second, but I uh, got all eight cameras on and working. You can display this any way you want. I like to keep the big frame. This is my front door. Okay, the, yes, the awning's kind of in the way. It's still usable, but yeah, awning, uh, then the front, there's another size. So, and then here's the inside. And you know, it'll. if I move here over here, you can see that I can see Jax on the couch right there. So I think this system is going to be perfect for me. We are still full bars on every single camera has a full signal. Oh, that one has three out of four right now, but yep. I am really happy with how it turned out and I'm really thankful that I did not have to run BNC cable for eight cameras all around this RV because that would not have been fun. But this is only part of it. My next, pros my next project is to get all of these cameras onto my phone. So, in your home, that would be easy. You have an ethernet in the back of the, of the device, the recorder, that ethernet goes into your ethernet at home of your router. Well, how are you gonna do that in an RV? Well, I and many other RVers use a hotspot device like this, although it could also be your hotspot on your phone. I just happened to buy this outright. This is an AT&T one that I rent on eBay, and it gives me unlimited, so this is giving me cellular Wi-Fi internet with no ethernet cord okay so what i do and what y'all can do is go buy an internet booster a wi-fi booster this is made by uh, netgear i don't think it matters specifically but what you need to do is look at the bottom and make sure that it has that ethernet port so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug this guy in and i'm going to sync this with my hotspot device. So this is called Nomadic Fanatic. I'm going to call this Nomadic Fanatic Booster. I'm not going to be using it for the booster as much as just getting that ethernet. Uh, we have to, I have to put it on the computer. There's some directions in there that tell you how to open up device manager and ha have a new password for it and everything. And then once that's on, and as long as my hotspot device is on, anytime I go outside, this is going to be connected to the network. So let me hook this up first, and then we will set up the wizard for the, I see, oh my gosh. Did I really just get that? Oh, wait, wait a minute here. I knew it was the Chinese knockoff version of like Night Owl or Swan, but I just, I haven't been pronouncing it. I just looked at it and I would pronounce that, I see you. 
<laughs> it's probably hissy you or something, but I see you. Isn't that funny for... Oh my gosh. I kill myself sometimes. That is hilarious if that, if that was intentional. Nice job, guys. Wow. All right, so I got it all connected. You'll see my, my phone is still listed up here, but you got Nomadic Fanatic and then Nomadic Fanatic Booster. It actually does broadcast a lot farther than you'd think. I've, I've had a lot of viewers actually find out that I'm in their campground by finding the Nomadic Fanatic Booster in the past. So it does kind of let people know from the entire campground that I'm in the area, which is kind of funny. Just waiting for the green lights there on my Netgear Booster. There we go, she's good. I got the Ethernet plugged into the back, going to the NVR. I'm just going to turn off and reset the system, and then it should pop up our wizard. There's the app they want us to use, IP Pro. All right, and while this boots up here, there it goes, actually. Cool beans, we're all there. We're configuring the network, please wait. All right, there's those barcodes again, so let me get my app open. Oh, isn't that a pretty app? Happy Pro would like to access the camera. Yes iOS link. Look at that. There we go. There's me in the top right corner there as I walk a little closer to the camera. Wow. Even on the phone, we're only delayed about a second or so. That's fantastic. There are multiple views. I could swipe probably. And there's the other uh, four. Or there's a way to put all eight on one screen. And you know what? This is pretty sweet. This way, anytime I'm outside the RV, no matter where I'm at, in the country, or even out of the country, I can always pull up my iPhone and see how Jax is doing inside the RV, see the condition of outside the RV, as well as... I can still hang a little thermometer here off to the side, on the side, so that I can physically see the temperature in here. I am amazed at the fact that there are no tailored RV security systems yet on the market. This is definitely an untapped area uh, for video NVR units and stuff like this. But I am still happy with this I See You version, just as I was with Night Owl. I just want to test it a little more. Certainly I want to drive a little bit and make sure that the Loctite on all the threads held up. I, I have no doubt that all the Allen wrench tightenings are, are going to work just fine. And you could physically still go a wider angle camera. They're quite a bit more expensive, about $100 a piece. And you can sync those wirelessly through here. Or if I don't like the system later, I already have the holes drilled, I could still then put in a different type of system. But this is the best way I know how to how to keep the RV safe. And in case anything crazy happens like Eureka, California, four or five years ago, I'll have it on video to share at least. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.